All right, all right, all right. What's going on everybody? Needs More Drums here, back with another video. So today I'm super excited because just in the mail this week, I finally got my Club Sport Shifter from Fanatec. Now this thing is supposedly pretty good in terms of the uh, lower tier of uh, racing shifters for sim racing and I was super excited to finally get my hands on one. Um, so we're going to start today, just kind of do a little bit of a first impressions and then how to set it up on PC, which is what I'm going to be using it for primarily. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, what do you get when you get the Fanatec shifter? Now, let's get the, the elephant in the room out of the way. The price is a little steep. Regardless, I think that sim racing stuff in general is kind of overpriced, but this shifter specifically was a pretty hefty price tag for all the three things that I had to get to set it up on PC. So what I had to buy, if you want to set it up on PC, what you need to do is you need to get the Club Sport shifter and then also the table clamp if you don't have a sim racing mount uh, with the seat and everything. And then you also need the USB adapter. So we're gonna, I got all those things. I'm gonna kind of show you what comes with each. And for all this, it does cost kind of a pretty hefty price of about 360-ish dollars, uh, which, I know it's not great, uh, but you know, we'll see if it's worth it. I guess eventually. So yeah, let's let's see what we get when we uh, when we open in, when we open up the box here. So first things first, when you get the Club Sport Shifter, it comes in a pretty decent sized box, and I gotta say, first impression is it's, it's definitely got some weight to it. So uh, you get a couple of mounting screws here, these guys, and um, these little little plastic these little plastic square things that are used if you have a, a, a sim racing rig or actually to the table clamp, but these are also in the in the set for the table clamp too. And then you get, of course, some essential cables here. I believe this is to hook it up to the, uh, if you have a Fanatec wheelbase, and this is just, will go into the uh, USB adapter. And then, I guess a, a shorter one, <laughs> in case you don't want one of those long ones. And then, of course, for sequential mode, you also get this nice little different kind of handle. I think that's kind of got a nice shape to it. It's got some weight to it. It's full metal. Feels really, you know, pretty quality so far. I gotta say I was a little bit impressed when I opened it up. And then finally, this thing is really kind of tucked away in there. Here is the actual shifter. Here is the actual shifter itself. Now, first impression of this thing, like, man, this thing is pretty, uh, I got to say a pretty significant upgrade from my uh, previous shifter, which was the Logitech G, the one that came with the G920 or G29 or whatever, you know, model you have. So I got to say that I'm very excited to use this. I mean, this thing is just feels like, you know, pretty, uh, pretty solid, like metal. Um, the throw is a little bit, you know, much stiffer than the, uh, than the Logitech one. And it definitely doesn't, you know, feel like a toy as much as the Logitech one. Now what I do like about this and that I'm really excited about is the fact that, so it comes in a standard H pattern with a uh, reverse and actually seven gears as opposed to just a standard six. Um, and it also has a sequential mode. Now this one, a lot of people compare this to the, uh, to the Thrustmaster, um, whatever it is, a T8 HA or whatever that is. But um, with the Thrustmaster, you have to do a lot to convert to sequential mode. You have to take like the top plate off and rotate it and put a new one on or whatever. This one is super easy. Literally, there is a switch on either side. You just take it and slide it back and then boom, you're in sequential mode. And then you just get your, you know, click forward and back. So super, super easy. Uh, and if you wanna, and if you wanna switch to the, uh, to the other knob here, all you do is just untwist this and just turn, you know, just switch it super, super quick. Literally takes like two seconds. So I'm super excited about that. That's gonna be fun depending on the type of car. Uh, I'm driving in, you know, Forza or something. I'm really excited to, to, to try out that sequential mode and the H pattern. Now, the one thing that I do got to say right off the bat is that a lot of people kind of don't um, really like too much about this is that in seventh gear, you actually have to push down to go into seventh, which pretty unrealistic. Uh, they say it's like, oh, it's meant to help you avoid missing shifts and to shift quicker. And actually, I think it's probably gonna end up taking a little bit longer because you have to go back, you know, into like neutral and then push it back to seventh, whereas like you can just go from six to seven. So I don't really know why they did that. 
Uh, the push down to reverse totally makes sense, but to go into seventh, not really the most realistic thing. Um, but whatever, it's cool. We'll see how it how it goes. I probably won't be driving too many cars with seven gears anyway. Um, so yeah, so now that we see kind of what you get with this, let's see what you get in the table clamp box. Now with the table clamp, same thing with the shifter box, you do get a set of screws and a set of these little, sorry the lighting is not great, um, these little uh, plastic things that actually, uh, I'll show you how those go in there in a second. And then you also get this pretty hefty, nice size table clamp. It's got two nice mounts on it. Uh, it's, you know, again, pretty, pretty solid. Def definitely not made out of plastic or anything. So like the G29, I do have to say though, in terms of mounting, it is not bad. You know, you do have these two little, uh, two little clamps here that you can lock into place with the top knobs here. And then you also have this bottom one that makes it pretty easy to mount. I have it mounted to my desk uh, and it, it, you know, did the job pretty well. So, so overall can't complain. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really understand. I, I do not really like how you had to buy all this though to mount it when they do, you know, they just give you the shifter and then just like, what are you supposed to mount it with? So I don't know. I do like the Logitech, how it does have that mount included. This one obviously doesn't. And this thing alone is like 40 bucks. So definitely a solid piece of equipment, but eh, is what it is, man. Um, and so the last thing that you need to set it up on PC is this USB adapter. And uh, to be honest, this thing is like $20 or $25. That was the one thing that kind of annoyed me more than not having the table clamp. I mean, I think that this should pretty much be included since you're already paying 200 plus bucks for the for the shifter itself. You know, why not just throw this in there so that you can actually use it with uh, any, any system that you want. Um, so yeah, I don't know, not the best, but again, is what it is. So yeah, now that we got that out of the way, let's uh, let's set it up and see see how it goes together here. All right. So first things first, uh, you have to. I remember you got these. I showed you these little plastic pieces here that you get with the shifter and with the table mount. So what these are is these actually slide into the grooves here on the shifter, depending on wherever you want to mount it. So. You can choose to mount it. What's nice is that it's literally everywhere. So you could choose to mount it on the front. Not sure really why you do that. Uh, but, or you can also mount it on, the, on either side or where I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna mount it to the back. So the first thing that you need to do to get these in there is there's these four little Allen screws here on the corners, these little corner plates. You have to take each of those tiny little corner pieces off. You don't have to remove the whole base plate, but you do have to remove these little corner ones. So to do this, you need a, I believe a five, five sixty-fourths little Allen key here. And we're just gonna take these off real quick. All right, now once we've removed those, you can see that the grooves are revealed there. So well, I guess, you know what? I didn't even need to take all four of them off. <laughs> oh, oh well, let's put, let's put the two front ones back on. <laughs> All right, so I got the two back ones off here. So now I can actually take the little uh, the little pl plastic screw piece here and just stick it like so. And then it just kind of slides right down in there. See right there, you can kind of move it up and down. So yeah, just depending on wherever you want to put it, um, you can just slide a couple of them in there. I am going to use four because I want to have it to be a little more sturdy. Now, here is the fun part. Sorry about the angle, you can't really really see this. But basically, there's a few places where you can mount it on the clamp. So you can mount it first if you want it to sit on top of it. There are some mounting points here, and these would go into the bottom of your shifter. And there's actually screw holes for that. I'll show you right here. There's actually screw holes for that right there, those four big ones there. And for that, they actually send you these, these, uh, these angled screws here that will fit right into, there's a nice little groove right there. So that'll fit right kind of nicely into there. So I'm not gonna use those. Uh, they also send you these other ones that are a little bit more rounded at the top like so. And those are the ones that I'm gonna use. So for these, these are a different size Allen wrench. You need a, you need a one eighth Allen wrench, Allen key for these. Um, like so, there we go. All right, so now 
I'm going to you I'm actually gonna mount mine to the front of the table clamp here so to do that there's a few different mounting points here that you can use and these will line up with the inner grooves of the shifter and these will line up with the outer grooves that uh, you only have to take the corner plates off if you want to mount these inner ones you actually have to take the bottom the bottom base plate off because these are like line up with like the third or so groove kind of in here so I'm gonna start with the outer ones and to do so I'm just kind of gonna line it up here I kind of want to let mine sit since my desk is kind of high I kind of want to let mine sit a little lower and as you can see there are three different um, different points where you can where you can put the screws in there so I'm actually gonna use I'm gonna try to use the bottom two and see how that goes uh, might not work maybe it, maybe it will I guess we'll see. So I'm going to kind of just try to line this up here and see how this is going to go. So I have the two top ones mounted in there, and as with any Allen key, you don't really need to tie you don't really need to tighten them too much because if you do, then you can run the risk of uh, wearing down the the uh, the corners of the of the screw of the screw head there, and then it'll get all rounded out and you won't be able to take it out. So just doesn't need to be super tight, just you know finger tight, and then kind of use the Allen key to kind of just tighten it up just a little bit more, but you don't need to freaking crank on it for you know days. <laughs> Now that I got that, so now I want to put the bottoms in here, and this, and this, it might be a little bit hard to kind of to kind of see once you get um, once you get the plate on. So what I would suggest is just kind of you know slide this in here like so, and then you can kind of take your your Allen key and just kind of see where it. There we go. That seems to be lined up there pretty well. So I'm going to go and put the screw in there. Same thing for the other side here, just kind of line it up nice and easy. And then I can see I have lined it up just fine. And there we go. And that is how my shifter is mounted to the table clamp. And as you can see, you know, like you said, you have those various mounting points. And see all those grooves in the middle there, those screw holes in the middle line up with the with the inner grooves of the shifter. So if I wanted a little bit more support, maybe I could take the uh, the bottom plate off and then slide those in like kind of over here. So now that this is complete, we're gonna put the, the corner pieces back on here. These two little guys. Again, don't need to make those too tight. And there we go. Now let's go uh, set it up and plug it in and see what to, uh, see how to calibrate it and everything and what to do next. All right, so now that we have everything set up hardware wise, now we gotta get into the fun software part of it. So first things first, you're gonna wanna go to fanatech.com and then to the driver tab here, it'll give you the latest version of the driver. Just download that, extract it with your favorite file extraction software, install it, and there you go. After that, you'll see we have the Fanatech control panel. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And so notice that I do not have any other devices. So I don't know if I mentioned before, but I am only using the, the Club Sport shifter in addition to a Logitech G920 wheel. That's the Xbox version. It's the same thing as the, the G29 for PS4. But 
So that's why I had to get the USB adapter because for PC, you can't hook it up. Usually you would hook it up into a Fanatec wheelbase, but since I have a Logitech wheelbase, you have to use the USB adapter to hook it up as its own input. So once we have this open, it'll detect your game controllers and then you just go to properties and now here we go. Now it says device needs to be calibrated, so let's calibrate the shifter. So it's in neutral. Then to reverse, I'm gonna push down, shift it into reverse. And then go to first gear, second gear, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and whatever reason, got to push down and go into seventh. And there we go. That should be that. So now we should be able to see here where I am shifting. See, there's a red light, so I'm going to go to first. There's in first. I'm going to go second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Push down to seventh and push down to reverse. So it looks like everything's working just fine. It's detecting all my inputs. So, okay, we'll get out of that. And I believe that's all that we need to do. So I'll probably uh, jump in a game here and see if it works. And if you don't hear from me, then it does work. Uh, so stay tuned for some videos using the Fanatec shifter. But until then, thank you guys for watching. And I hope this was helpful to some of you. If you have any other questions, please don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to leave a comment below and I would be happy to help in whatever way I can. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. See ya.